Monday, April 8th, uh, 2019, 7.02 p.m. Uh, prayer, Reverend Gregerson. All right, welcome. All right, Pastor Emma. Thank you, good to be here. Psalm 139. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Uh, I, when I see the news, I see an awful lot of people that think they know how to tell what's going on in the minds of other people. Um, and that's on both sides, all around. Doesn't seem very effective. Uh, the way, thing that I found helpful as I go about trying to serve people in the community, serve people in my congregation, uh, do ministry, is that if I can look at myself and ask God to root out the offensive ways in me, and deal with my own personal anxieties. I do a whole lot better dealing with other people who for sure have offensive ways in them and anxieties and those things. But I can't really do anything about that. So here, the psalmist, uh, King David, is asking God to search in him so that he can better serve. Uh, so that's my prayer for us tonight. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for these wonderful servants uh, that are here to serve the people of this community, people that have been elected, appointed, uh, hired, uh, people that are here from the community to make sure that uh, the job that's done here is uh, suiting the needs of everybody in our community. And we just ask, Lord, that as we converse together and go about doing the business that you have in mind for North Canton, that you would help us to know all of the things about the inner workings of our own hearts. We ask you to search us and, and help keep us from trying to guess what's going on in the minds of other people, reading into their thoughts, their motives, and all of those things. And just we ask you to help each and every one of us as individuals to be the best people that you can be, uh, the best people that we can be uh, to serve you and the people of this community. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we please call the roll. Peters? Here. Foltz? Here. Loretta? Here. Revolt? Here. Eastland? Here. Warren? Here. And Fonte? Here. <coughs> Uh, for your consideration, a motion and a second to approve as presented. Committee the whole meeting minutes March 4th, 19. Special council meeting minutes March 4th, 19. Council meeting minutes March 11th, 19. Special council meeting minutes March 18th, 2019. Committee the whole meeting minutes March 18th, 19. Special council meeting minutes March 21st, 19. And finally, financial report February 19th. Motion to approve as presented. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, at this time, if you wish to address council, please step forward, forward, state your name and address for the record. And there's a, a few new faces, and there are, I think we're going to have at least one uh, new speaker tonight. Just a couple uh, uh, ground rules you might not be aware of. Five minute time limit. I will keep the time here. And, uh, the conclusion of your comments. There are no back and forth discussion uh, during public speaks. If you want to talk to a council member or a member of administration, the follow up after the meeting will be here. Okay, Sue. Sue. Well, we got the time here. Oh. Sue, Sue Platt, 801 Briar. On Monday, March 18th, I couldn't stay for the committee of the whole meeting. Thanks to Mr. Osborne's video, I saw and heard both the council meeting and the committee of the whole meeting. I want to publicly thank Mr. Osborne for videotaping and recording the meeting and placing them on YouTube. Without Mr. Osborne's video and recording, I would not have heard Ms. Brown's honest and succinct explanation of the live streaming problems experienced at council meetings. I realize videotaping and recording takes time for Mr. Osborne, but it is an excellent communication and backup tool when other technologies fail. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Sue. Sue. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
My name is David Lindsay Michael. I live at 216 Viking Street. Uh, I always refer to it as the place behind the old Spitzer Chevrolet area. That's the that's way people know where I'm at. Uh, what I'd like to discuss with you tonight is one of the amendments that you have here in, in town uh, is an ordinance. Uh, 4511.214, 4511.215 concerning golf carts within the city of North End. And what it states in, in the end, uh, if the local government has approved golf cart travel on streets and roads uh, this, with a 35 mile an hour or slower speed limit, you have not passed an ordinance allowing golf carts to be operated on city streets of North Camp. My objective tonight is to present to you, I would like to change on that ordinance. I'm 67 years old. I travel for the last five years. I've had three golf carts. And this is the first time that I knew that we weren't allowed to, to run them on the city streets of North Canton. I sent a letter to Mr. Fultz, and in that letter, his concern was that the inspection criteria and everything to get your license placed. There is a place on Wells Avenue that sells golf carts. That's the closest one. Fairway. They will ask you if you're going to do this as an off-road vehicle. If you are, one of the first things they hand you is this. This is what the State Highway Patrol requires you to do to a golf cart to make it street legal. This is at your own expense. If I may, quickly, and my golf cart, by the way, is sitting out front for anybody to take a look at, is licensed, is insured, it has to be at the requirement. I carry the same insurance on it that I do my car, $500,000. That's my choice. But you got to have front and rear license plates. You got to have a valid driver's license. You got to have proof of insurance card. The steering is inspected. They inspect the tires. You need the headlights visible for a thousand feet. Minimum of one tail light, which I have. <clears throat> my car is set up just like a car. You have headlights, two tail lights, illuminated rear license plate bracket. Two red reflectors visible at 300 feet. This is new. This just went into effect last year by the, the sheriff's department. You have orange in the front, two, one on each side, posted on my safety glass window. You have two red ones on the back, so you can see me. Two working taillights, which I have. They also double as my turn signals. Emergency brake. The brake and the cart must stop within 40 feet at 20 miles per hour. Horn is required, has to be audible for 500 feet. Exhaust, if it's an internal combustion engine. Rear view mirrors, you can have two types. You can have the little one like you have in a normal car, or like mine, <coughs> goes clear across the top. It's what they call a five panel rear view mirror. I can see from one sidewalk to the other sidewalk. Windshield, windshield wiper, which I have. I've installed that myself. Self-illuminating, electrical mechanical turn signal, visible front and rear. I have it, installed myself. Seat belts, installed myself. I have it currently, this is my third cart in the last five years. This cart was bought as a two-person cart, and that's what I have. I have two sets of seat belts in the front. Mr. Peters checked my cart out. Uh, 
he sat in it and, and uh, looked at the belts and everything and seen that all the safety stuff was there. And it must not travel more than 20 miles per hour. That is, that's the current requirements to walk into the Department of Motor Vehicles and be just like any other any other citizen. Dave, if I can stop you, we're at the five minute time limit. If I could ask you, um, the paperwork that you have there, if you could, uh, Kathy, would you mind taking some of that and running copies for the rest of the council for our, for our reference? Or you can even scan it and just send it to us all that way, do whatever it's easiest. Yeah. And I appreciate it, Dave, and we'll be uh, talking about this in the future. So thank okay, you. I'm, thank I'm, you I'm sorry, I went over. It's your first time to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. I knew it was kind of long. Just yeah. you hang around, Dave. You can talk to us afterwards. You need yeah. some background. Yeah, we'll be around if you want to hang around afterwards. Okay, that's inspection sheet. This is okay. Anyone else wish you to address council? Please step forward, state your name, address, and the council you represent. Okay. Okay. Anyone else wish you to address council? Please step forward, state your name, and address for the record, please. Larry Tripp, 11270 Staple, North Camp. Uh, before I was so rudely interrupted by council president uh, during the meeting on March the 21st, but the following are the exact words I wanted to speak that evening. Message Fonte revoked along with Council Person Teasley. What has this council been discussing the better part of the past seven months? Yes, Main Street business or business district, whatever it's called. Supposedly a tool to drive new business into North Canton along Main Street, but still unfinished after seven months. So what does the city do and what will council ultimately approve is a request of 144000 as part of a plan to move city council chambers away from Main Street. It's like, do as I say, but not as I do. This move is meant to be a project to produce synergies within its operation and provide a more upfront relations with its clientele. How many times have we heard that from a business only to find out a year later that the business closed. Since Mr. Graham became city engineer, we have heard nothing but praise for this department. Perhaps there may have been some synergies to be realized because of the culture and work ethics of a former city engineer, but I would be hard pressed to believe the same work ethics now exist within that department. In fact, I believe it to be a slap in the face to Mr. Graham in the engineering department. Remember, employees follow the lead of their surrounding and leadership. One only has to look at city council when it comes to wasted time, worth it, ethics, attendance, etc. Who knows, after the meeting, after the reading of the cancellation of the public hearing of March 25th, 2019, it's probably reasonable to assume the tabling of ordinance 3 2019 comes next, and we now see a seven months of nothing by, comp by council. I would suggest slow down with this move, wait and see what transpires with the safety center issue. If and when this becomes a reality, there will probably be more remodeling within City Hall after the departure of the police state department. Actually, Mr. Osborne made a good point suggesting City Hall receive a second floor. That along with the new safety center would certainly enhance the landscape of a Main Street business district. <clears throat> Mr. DiOrio, if Council and City Hall had only vaguely listened to some four or five years ago when I suggested a part-time lawyer, part-time city planner, and a part-time city engineer be employed by the city, we would probably already be in the process of seeing construction of a new safety center and a workable Main Street business leg legislation. Mr. Fonte, thank you for showing some concern about my stress when we talked the other day, but everything's just fine. Everything's fine. So, Council President, the law with the law director and assistant clerk, get your great pleasure to try to manipulate and intimidate humiliate a year short of an 80-year-old Northampton senior citizen, being me. Mr. Revolt's, Mr. Revolt's infamous remarks, one needing to take off their clothes and take a hard look at themselves, 
in the mirror, it happened. A couple nights after I saw Mr. Fonte, I did exactly that. I looked and I said, not too bad, noting I had a fairly sound mind, good memory, all my limbs, no walker, no depends, all in all, nothing, nothing too bad. That evening, I thanked the man upstairs for my help and said I had one more request, that I be lived to be 100 and in 2040 be able to address North Canton City Council. He welcomed my request and said on one condition, no more evictions from city council meetings, and asked why my request. I merely said I wanted to laugh at the 2040 council president as he par paraphrased President Trump's remarks of 2018. I can see it now. He and I laughing as he says, you must have had a leader that didn't have the mental capacity as needed, dumb as a rock, and lazy as hell. You know, Council Peters and the Law Director, the older I get, the less I care what the two of you think. Try the humility or whatever, have fun. Therefore, the older I get, the more I enjoy life. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Anyone else wishing to address council, please step forward, state your name and address for the record. Would I be allowed to pass this back flyer out before I begin to speak? Yeah, we'll pass it over here. Okay, here, I'll right. take them and pass them on. Thank you, sir. My name is Matthew Milliken, and I live at 407 West Maple Street. And I came here uh, to talk about the laws that pertain to keeping chickens on your property. The laws that were passed about keeping chickens on your property, to my knowledge, were passed about six to seven years ago, mainly due to a complaint filed by someone who doesn't even live in the city. And some of the laws, I think, are very impractical for um, the type of urban environment that many people live in. And I would just like to list three of them and then a possible starting point for how the laws could be changed to make it uh, more acceptable or more or protect people more that contain or keep chickens on their property. The first law is that chickens are never allowed to free range in the yard. They must always be penned in a coop that is 18 square feet or less. Um, dogs are allowed to be loose in the yard. And if you're ever walking, dogs are usually barking at you as you walk. And if you've ever passed by a chicken, they don't really bark at you. They aren't allowed to have roosters, and I'm not arguing for that change. They just simply graze, and they might cock their head and look at you very curiously, but that's about all they will do. They won't harm people. And uh, I think they should be considered to, allow, to be allowed to free range in a fenced in yard. Um, debatable whether it could be a chain fence or a solid wood fence, but I think there should be some more freedoms there. Also, I previously mentioned that 18 square foot is currently what we limit chickens to, and they must always be penned up in that. Many chicken publications recommend that if you allow your chickens to free range, you should have at least four square feet. So this is three square feet of chicken. And so if you've ever seen three chickens in 18 square feet, there's not a lot of room for them to even move around or scratch. And it doesn't promote an ethical keeping and treatment of chickens and, uh, and the birds on your property. And if we were not allowed to keep chickens in a fenced-in yard or to let them loose in a fenced-in yard to graze, then it is recommended that you would keep them in a pen of 10 square feet at least per chicken based on most major chicken publications. And so obviously 18 square feet is significantly less, less than a third of the 60 square feet recommended for keeping chickens in a permanent enclosure. Um, finally, I would like to mention that the third law that causes a lot of people issues is that chickens must always be kept for 20 feet from the property line or 50 feet from another residence. And the many people that have chickens um, that live on lots where this is not possible. So this bans chickens in a lot of lots. Um, we have requirements to keep yards clean and not smelling. You know, those laws are there and still available for people to address anybody who would not keep your chicken or yard in an acceptable state. Um, and so I think there could be some easing in this law to make it acceptable for people who live in an urban environment or, or, or a more urban lot, especially located in the center of town. 
So I hope that you will consider, consider these articles and consider uh, this as maybe a starting point to give people a little more room uh, to own chickens. And I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Clark Osborne, 307 Gregory Street, Southeast, North Canton, Ohio. I want to bring uh, council, uh, make them aware of a property in 602 East Maple. Uh, this is a corner lot in the corner of Pershing and East Maple. For some reason, they were allowed to build a house on this very, very, very small lot. I think they needed three variances. And this is our illustrious Mr. Bowles from years ago that allowed this. This was for an elderly couple who have since moved out, and there are some younger people in there, and they wanted to put in a pool. And they also wanted six foot privacy fences. Uh, and of course, as we know, all these corner lots are considered to have two front yards, as you can see from the street on two sides. They've been before the Planning Commission, the ZBA, at least twice, maybe even three times, and turned down. Well, today I drove by the house, and well, actually my wife did first. They're putting in an above-ground pool that's probably the sides or up to your shoulders. It encompasses the entire backyard. It is an atrocious sight. Now, I, uh, I haven't not much digging as far as what the code allows. Uh, I vaguely remember that you can only populate, uh, or you must, I guess you just need to leave 60% of your rear yard free of structures. Like I said, we're probably talking 90% of the backyard is this monstrous pool. I already talked to Mr. Van Gundy, and he's looking into it, I guess. Uh, I don't harbor anything against the, uh, the individuals. I don't know why they bought a corner lot where they wanted privacy and needed fencing that the city would not allow now and want to put in a large pool in an undersized small yard. Uh, this kind of dovetails with what I've been begging and asking this city. If you want to do economic development and forget all this CRA, um, giveaways, let's zone, zone out of existence R50. They do not need anybody's needs. You don't have parking. You don't have place for snow. You can't even protect it in a fire if you had to because the houses are all so close together. R50 needs to go. And we need to maintain our existing code instead of Cutting a break here, cutting a break there. As I said, when this house was built, they were given three variances. And we've all heard the old saying, you give somebody an inch, they're going to take a mile. Well, the new homeowners move in. They want more variances in order to utilize the property in the way that they see fit. You cannot utilize these small lots. But I'd like each one of you to drive by and look at the monstrosity that we're all going to have to see because you're not going to be able to put a privacy fence on the Pershing side of the property. It is hugely, aesthetically, ugly as sin. And whether there was any kind of a variation, you know, we all see pools in backyards and they generally take a good size of the yards. But there ought to be some differentiation in our code versus a, a flush pool, a regular in-ground pool, versus one that's way up out of the ground. Uh, there needs to be larger um, yard requirements or something. But go by and look at this. This is not what we want our neighborhoods to look like. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Address Council. Uh, Bill Neff, 519, Dr. 
Street, Southeast. I'm sorry, what was it again? Uh, 519, uh, my name? Spell your last name. K-N-E-P-P. -E -P. And the name of your street? 519, Bagel Street, Southeast. <laughs> you have all talked about moving and are doing so, moving all the city services to the city hall to be better for all concerned and to be able to manage better. Good idea. This is the first reason why we need everyone here on council to agree that we need to have a new safety center building. The first priority of any city government should be the safety of its citizens. To all the safety forces under one roof, not only for a, a one-stop shop, but also for the well-being and morale for our men and women who work in these conditions that are not that are now subject to to have uh, to have you guys be invited to, um, and I know you've been invited by the chiefs to go to these buildings these facilities and see for yourself how cramped these, these places really are. I know when I had, when I was on apartment fire, I came up here a lot of times and invited everybody up there for open house. Some of you would, would come and some of them wouldn't, but I'm just saying, you know. I mentioned months ago, 25 years ago, there was five pounds of stuff in a two pound bag. And today we got 30 pounds of this stuff growing in the same bag. And I don't think I'm overstating this. If you go through the building, you'll see what I'm talking about. You shouldn't have to be asked to come down and go through these buildings, but do it on your own. I have been privileged to sit and listen to three out of four of the architects for the proposal of this building. And it will be done it'll be done right, whoever gets picked to do the building. Patrick and his team is doing a great job and it's, it's going to be a, an asset to our community once this building is built. I know that our people, I know there's people out there who are for the safety building but are not for the pros site that this building is being built on. I was on the Hoover, I was on the Hoover EPA committee and I recently talked to one of the Hoover vice presidents about this issue, who was also in this committee. He sees no problem here. The problem, the company, as he told me, did all, did all the EPA ask and some more. I feel that the US EPA, the state EPA, sees no problems here. And these companies that were, whoever we pick, this architect we're going to kick, if they can do their research and see no problem there, then we should go ahead and uh, go with this. Our original site for the first safety building 25 years ago was just north of the fire station, north of Charlotte Street. And it would be uh, the new build, it, it, it would be, the old, the old building was going to be just west of where the new building is going to be built. So if you go north there across Charlotte Street, you'll see uh, that big parking lot. That's where we were originally going to build the building. I'm excited about I'm I'm excited about this. We never got this far before in our original plans for a safety building for our police, fire, and EMS. Again, I'm asking you all to tour our present facilities and see what our men and women have to work in and work with. The time is now. It's past due. I know we. We get, I know we'll get the support we need for this uh, building to be an asset for our city, and especially it would be great for our, our, our safety forces. I also want to thank all the people who have worked with me, Patrick, Laura, Mark, Daryl, and the mayor over the past two and a half years, getting us to where we're at today. Thank you. Thank you.
apologies, Ordinance 1320 and 27, all appropriations, all required three readings, or one reading, uh, but I did not waive the rules of council on the last council meeting, so uh, put it back on, and I'm just going to go ahead, we're going to suspend the rules uh, for three readings, and then adopt under suspension for the second reading for these three. Number 13, <coughs> 20, and 27. Daryl, did you have something? Yeah, I got a, I got a, mine's a kind of point word that's related to uh, yours. My question is this, is that we gave these, uh, particularly 13 to 20, a first reading to be subsequently reconsidered, but in the process, the mayor has signed that ordinance. And I don't, my question is, can legislation, if it's been signed, can it get a second reading? It can. It hasn't been published. It was uh, incorrectly signed, but it hasn't been published. And it was full before. Given for again items eight and nine, I would ask council because these have been discussed in committee, they have received a first reading. I would ask that we amend each of them to include an emergency clause. And the reason is uh, particularly for the generator, we are in tornado season. I think we would like to have that generator in place as soon as possible. With regard to the flags, uh, we are rapidly approaching Memorial Day. So that would be my suggestion as we, as we consider these. I don't believe we have to, but Tim, can you weigh in on that? Yes, sir. Because they're uh, appropriations, if we waive the requirement for the three readings as soon as they're signed by the mayor, just like emergency. Yes, ma'am. Uh, because these are each appropriations, once they're waived the requirement for three readings and they're signed by the mayor, just like emergency legislation, they'll become law immediately, just in the same way. So simply waiving the requirement for the three readings it is sufficient. We won't have to put an emergency clause with uh, either of the three. So in case it's a word, we'll be Yes, sir. And you won't have to. Because we'd have to rewrite the ordinance with the requirement. Let me suggest something. Yes. I have had some reservations about this entire process. Um, and I respect that there may be a new approach. But I think we ought to have, when we have an appropriation of this nature that is new, and although we've called it supplemental, it in effect is something new that was unbud may have been unbudgeted not containing the appropriation, we really ought to have three readings as a rule. I mean, maybe we should get back to that if we can. Uh, be just my suggestion. You mean if it's money that was donated or if it's money yeah. coming from the budget? If it's coming from the budget and we have not appropriated it in, 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 when the budget is adopted, it is not a supplemental, it is a new program and therefore it should be treated just like we would any other ordinance. And I think that way you don't have the, this mix up on whether it's one reading or yeah. whatever. You give it, give them three, include an emergency clause, and it's <coughs> Do you attach a dollar amount to it? Like say if it's over 25,000, you just say it doesn't matter. I just, I don't think it matters. Okay. And that's just, I think that just keeps things really, really clean. So you're saying that that's a must? What happens if we do need it? Yeah, you just kind of think it's what they say. Okay, okay sorry. sorry. If, if I could stop for a second, this is a legislative meeting. We can discuss this in the committee. Yeah. Why don't we do this uh, in our next available uh, committee meeting? That way we can have a more comprehensive discussion regarding this. But this agenda are these, are these pieces. And 13, 20, and 27 uh, being appropriations. And you're going to give these three readings? No. no. You're going to only give them two? Two readings. Waive the rules of council. Because time is of the essence for, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. generator sure. and flags for Memorial Day. Yes, that was a little generator. And flags for Memorial Day. Okay. 
correct. In 2017-18, if you're intent on moving forward. Okay, that was our intent last council meeting, so that is my intent for this one. We'll waive the rules, it'll, it'll become law on the second reading. And you're saying 13, 20, and 27? 27. Correct. Is that right on the same page? I thought Tim said you had to have three, though. <laughs> waive, you have the authority to waive the requirements of three. Okay. okay. Outside of waiving sure. that, it would require three. On preparation. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. So in the future, you're saying, Daryl, about three readings, nothing on talk about that. We're going to talk about it later. Got it. Okay. Okay. Chairwoman Ware. Okay. So, do we still want to take them individually? We have to. We have to take them individually. Okay. So we've talked about Ordinance 13, um, in preparation for the flags. I think we're up to 10,500. If there are any other questions or concerns, I move to adopt. Second. Wait, we need a motion. You have a reading. Oh, we're ready. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, yeah. should, I, I okay. turned it over to you. I yes. said a motion. Okay. May I have a I'll motion to second to read? Motion to read. Second. In ordinance authorizing the appropriation of funds of the city of North Canton. Get the vote on that motion. All in favor? All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. My apologies. Or vote right now. And it's I get caught up in a committee meeting in the middle of a legislative meeting. I'm trying to. Okay, now we're back on track. Okay, okay just please. That's the first one going, then we're going to, we're going to be ready. In ordinance authorizing the appropriation of funds of the city of North Canton from donations received and pledged for placing additional United States flags along Main Street to the unappropriated resources of the General Trust Fund to the General Trust MSB U.S. Flag Account. Thank you. Now, Chairwoman Warren, apologies. Okay, so as I said, this is for the authorization of flags for $10,500 in um, appropriations or in appropriate resources to the General Trust Fund. Thank you, Don. Yes. No other questions or concerns I move to adopt. Thank you for your support. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion Aye. carries. Okay. Nay. Nay. Let the record reflect. Member of vote. Voted nay. Uh, may I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council for three readings? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Member of vote. Nay. And finally, a motion and a second to adopt under suspension of the rules ordinance number 13 19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Daryl? Motion carries. All right, may I have a motion and a second to read by title only, second reading ordinance number 20-19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Tim? In ordinance authorizing the appropriation of $250,000 of the City of North Canton funds from the unappropriated resources of the Capital Improvement Fund, Contract payments fund for the purchase and installation of a generator capable of providing electricity for the complete operation of all departments in City Hall in the event of a power outage. Yes, Chairwoman Ware. So we've talked about this, and this is for the purchase and installation of a generator. And we receive bids and we move forward. Time is of the essence. The motion we adopt. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Member Fold, nay. I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council for three readings for ordinance number 20-19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Member of vote nay. And finally, a motion and a second to adopt under suspension of the rules ordinance number 20-19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. And finally, member of vote Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second to read by title only. Second reading, ordinance number 25 19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Yep. An ordinance authorizing the city of North Canton to adopt the general fund balance policy. Simple enough. Chair one more. Um, we talked about this before as well, this is uh, a proactive approach to financial management. Laura, you talked about it before. Is there anything else you want to say? I think that if you, if you read the packet, it really lays it out very well from purpose, background, requirements. Um, it's, a good, it's, 
Good. Anything else you want to say? Thank you. No, I have nothing else. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. So I move to adopt. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And moving on. Um, we have a motion and a second to read by title only, second reading ordinance number 27 19. This particular space that we occupy uh, consumes approximately, by like rough guessing, about 25% of the city hall space, maybe more, maybe a third. When you think about it, and I think this goes to Larry's question, when you think about it, uh, this space is used for 12 hours a month. back to my comment about taking off all our clothes and looking in the mirror. If we look at many of the problems that we've had, I think yeah, we would make that comment again. Yeah, yeah. It's not good. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> but we, we, if, if we were to honestly acknowledge some of the problems we've, we've encountered, it's because we, need, we lack the kind of supervision that we need to have by having our people in the building. There's a temptation to, to say that our current present will exist into the future. And I, I think that while we're delighted that Rob and his team are here, uh, we may not be as fortunate in the future. Again, it speaks to the importance of having our professional staff managed in one location. Uh, I was around when we moved engineering across the street. I can tell you in retrospect, I think it was a mistake. We should have had that team in this building. And therefore, Mr. President, I'm going to move for that reason. Uh, for the adoption of this. I'm going to vote no, but I'm, I'm going to make a motion. <laughs> okay. Later. Later. Yeah. 
And, but it needs to be, I think this needs to be done. Just to reflect, I know you're feeling this way, this should not reflect any, any criticism on Rob. And absolutely not. No, I want to write that to be known. Yeah, absolutely He's not. He's done a tremendous job. Yeah, so he is. And, and, and again, it's, it's, down, it's the down the road stuff. You know, we live in, it's pretty good now. But the reality is we may not be as fortunate in the future. And again, I think that one of the lessons learned here is that we probably could have had better supervision. How do we get that a part of this? Having it in, under, under the roof, across the court from our administrator, who supervised. So we don't have issues. We have a good set of leaders, and it's nice to work as a team together yes. for the same common direction, which is to get us to the goal line, which is that you got to cut costs, be efficient, and get things done. Not like politicians, but like entrepreneurs. E-N-T-R-E, P-R-E, and E-U-R. Got it? <coughs> that was good. Good bump ups. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just make one comment on that. You know, uh, back when I first started as the city of Minnesota, back in, uh, when I served as city of back in 2001, I remember that we had multiple locations for the departments, and there were times that various department employees didn't see each other for the better part of a year because of the various locations. And so since then, you know, we have our administrator and we have a uh, weekly department head meetings, so there's a constant communication. But when you have people in the same location, the information flows. There's there's a much less of a void of uh, communication, and it just comes that synergy and, and the teamwork is dominant the same. So I think you'll see better performance. Just having everybody together. All right, Daryl's motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We have a revolt day. And we have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council for three readings. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And we're full day. And finally, a motion and a second to adopt under suspension of the rules for next 27 days. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Full day. Okay, on to new business. I only have a motion and a second to read by title only first reading ordinance number 28 19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. In ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of North Kent on board of control approval to enter into a project development agreement with Johnson Controls, Inc. to develop facility improvement measures, a copy of which is attached here to and incorporated herein and declaring the same to be in emergency. Chairwoman Ware. So we started talking about this last week. And there were a couple items, I think, that I think they really requested. Uh, I can't remember what this was, who requested what. Um, but uh, kind of looking at how we can explore potential energy and operational savings by upgrading certain systems or equipment. And there was a whole list of different items um, that were attached to that, and that is all in here as well. Um, so I, did we receive those other items? I thought some, some of us did. OK. Daryl, you got them? Okay. I didn't get the email. Yeah, my, my point would be, I'm going to pass the first reading, but I'd like to review um, the record with other communities. I think we owe it to, to look at this a little closer. Yeah. Obviously, it um, could be a great idea for us, but let's, um, let's evaluate a little further. That's my, that's my point. So what are you looking for? I want to see what okay, they've so done for some other communities, and if Daryl has that information, I'm sure we could all get past pass that on. Okay. Mr. President, someone yes, had asked to have this placed on emergency last week, so we changed the language on the ordinance, so if anything could be changed back, or are we just going to go more readings? Why don't we just do the first reading? Yeah. First reading, yeah, we'll get the first that. reading without talking, even though the emergency clause is in there. Right. Yeah, we just do the first reading. I move to adopt the first reading of Ordinance 28 219. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, uh, next, may I have a motion and a second to read by title only first reading Ordinance number 29 19. So moved. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Yeah. In order 
ordinance authorizing the supplemental appropriation of funds of the city of North Canton to be appropriated from the unappropriated resources of the general fund to the general government professional services and account in the amount of $29,865 in the unappropriated resources of the water fund to the water administration professional services account in the amount of $66,780 for the cost proposed project development agreement with Johnson Controls Inc. So this goes really hand in hand, I guess, with ordinance number 28. And then these are just the monies that would be attached to it to get the project started. Um, so I would, if there are any other questions about that, I'd say that we could do that first reading as well and kind of just move along in the same fashion. I'll second that. Is this one of those ones where you only need one, one reading of it? There's no urgency on it. It's because appropriations. It is an appropriation. And the reason that I ask it is that obviously, even if you pass ordinance number 2919, you still wouldn't be able to move forward right. without 2819. So to make it less confusing later, which you know, is the objective, uh, if this is an appropriation ordinance that can fall under the rule of one and done if you suspend the rules, I would recommend that you do that for 2919. So that all we have to do then is 2819, or not 2819. Won't suspend the rules for three readings for this. Is that what you're saying? saying? An option? No, I was no, making this point of dispensing the 2019 by not saying it. I was was uh, just making a, an observation that you could dispense with 2919. Right on, suspending the rules. It's an appropriation. It's done. And then we only have to come back to 2819 down the road if council decides to move forward. If council decides to move forward, it doesn't really matter Not about 2819. Do we have a question, Tim? Do we have a question, but they appear paired. If, I guess, being the devil, say the devil's advocate, is if you don't pass 28, what do you do? So, so can we just do them both next week? Next, we'll do the first reading tonight, and then we'll just go concurrently with uh, 2819. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions regarding 2919? No. Did we have a motion to adopt the first reading? <coughs> so moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, moving on. I have a motion and a second to read by title only. First reading ordinance number 30-19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Tim? An ordinance authorizing the reclassification of funds of the City of North Canton within various budget line items during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2019. Thank you, Chairman Moore. Lord, do you want to mention anything about this? I know you talked about it at the committee meeting as well, but. Sure, just to reiterate what we talked about the committee, this is due to some of the changes within departments that we've had since the original budget was passed at the end of 2018 for this year, uh, both the building permits department and then the council law department. And that's really, which I feel like we do this every year, right? And it's change and... We do throughout the year. We knew that this one would be coming because of building permits, that okay. we, we didn't have the final numbers on Safeville when we did the budget in right. November. Okay. Okay. So are there any other questions that we have to adopt? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council for three readings. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. No. Member of vote nay? Wait, that didn't happen. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't have an emergency. It's appropriations. Got it. Who are you seconding? So we have six yay, one nay. I'm oh, sorry, motion and a second. Motion and a second to adopt under suspension of the rules ordinance 30-19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Member of vote nay. Okay. Uh, moving on. May I have a motion and a second to read by title only first reading ordinance number 31-19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Attempt. An ordinance approving, confirming, and accepting a 60-foot 
sidewalk easement by and between the city of North Canton and to Mir and Kimberly Davenport regarding parcel number 92-08729, Star County, Ohio, to construct an Americans with Disabilities Act compliant sidewalk around an existing traffic signal cone pole, or not cone pole, located in the center of an existing sidewalk and declaring the same to be emergency at the uh, This is one over on the south side of Everhard Road uh, when they did the uh, work on the road. The pole had to be in the middle so you can't get walkers or wheelchairs around it so uh, we got the easement for the neighbor so they're just going to carve a spot out so you can wiggle around it about 60 square feet. It's not an emergency due to the time of year we want to get this thing done so I move that we pass this on one. President. Yes, sir. I'd like the record reflect the city's thanks to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Davenport for granting this easement. Uh, it could have been required to take it by any domain, uh, an action which would have taken many, many months. And a lot of dollars. And a lot of dollars. <laughs> so the community is grateful. Yes, sir. For the good of the second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Finally, a motion and a second to adopt under suspension of the rules ordinance number 31 19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And a motion and a second to read by title only. First reading ordinance number 32 19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, Tim. An ordinance authorizing the Director of Administration of the City of North Canton to advertise and receive bids according to specifications now on file in the Director's office. Seven. Seven. Oh, I'm important to me. Yep. Okay. Um, <coughs> I was on 33 and 132. Yeah. Thank you. An ordinance authorizing the Mayor of the City of North Canton through the Board of Control to enter into an agreement by and between the City of North Canton and the Star County Board of Commissioners for repaving of Applebrook Street Northeast and declaring the same to be versus Thank you, Chairman Fund. Um, this is a, just an agreement between us and the uh, Star County Commissioners because uh, the, they're kicking in some of the money. So we need that agreement to go along with the next ordinance, uh, 33. So I move we pass out an emergency. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council for three weeks. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Finally, a motion and a second to adopt under suspension of the rules of ordinance number 32. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion and a second to read by title only first reading ordinance number 33 19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yeah. An ordinance authorizing the Director of Administration of the City of North Canton to advertise and receive bids according to specifications now on file in the Director's Office and authorizing the Mayor on Board of Control approval to enter into a contract for the repaving of Apple Grove Street Northeast at a total cost not to exceed $575,800 and declaring the same to be an emergency. Thank you, Chairman Fonte. Roughly at 6,600 square feet, or 6,600 linear feet. And just to remind everybody, it's going to be polymer, not regular blacktop, which will hold up uh, to more frigid temperatures. It's more expensive, but very wise investment for the busier roads, especially with the troubles we have at the square uh, of Apple Road and Cleveland Avenue. We're going to get a grant for 200,000 of it. And fill me in on the breakdown. There's like 85 from Stark County, 200 from uh, Ohio works. Yes, right. The remainder would be us for around five hundred eighty-five thousand in their estimate. So this is going to be on an emergency. So I move that we get this passed tonight. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council for three reasons. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Finally, a motion and a second to adopt under suspension of the rules. So moved. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And a motion and a second to read by title only. First reading, ordinance number 34-19. So moved. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Tim? An ordinance authorizing the Director of Administration of the State of North King to advertise and receive bids according to specifications now on file in the Director's office and authorizing the Mayor, upon Board of Control approval, to enter into a contract for the Glenwood Street Southwest Water and Water Replacement Project in an amount not to exceed $850,000 in declaring the same to be an emergency. Thank you. Chairman, or Chairman Nusra. Uh, yes, this is exactly how it reads. Uh, this is discussing committee and budget, so I have a motion to adopt. Second. Under emergency two. Yep. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we have a motion and a second. Second to suspend the rules of council for three readings. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Finally, a motion and a second to adopt under suspension of the rules. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, may I have a motion and a second to read by title only first reading ordinance number 35 19. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Yep. An ordinance repealing and replacing North Canton Ordinance number 89 09, Stark County Stormwater Quality Regulations for Stark Stormwater Waters 2018 update to the same. And declaring the same to be an emergency. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, that's right. Yes, also discussed, just to update the regulations. So, uh, again, move to adopt. Second. All in favor? I'm oh, sorry. Under emergency. Oh, yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of council. So you Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Finally, a motion and a second to adopt under suspension of the rules. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And uh, that concludes legislative agenda reports. Uh, Deputy Director for you. Thank you. Uh, first report, I'll give you a little update on summer staffing. We are uh, starting early, and we've currently hired uh, 10 um, summer seasonal workers that will be working in our parks and recreation department, our street department, and our water treatment plant. Um, so a couple openings still, if anyone knows of anyone. This year also we'll be hiring uh, two interns to do um, more work on the administrative and finance side too. Right. Um, also just one other thing I wanted to open the IT side. As you all are aware, our back end is our IT <coughs> And they provide us with a quarterly phishing report, which is letting us know about the, um, you, you may have received some after emails is what they call, where they're posing um, to see if they can sort of uh, trick you into clicking on something, but kind of, you know, suspicious. They'll say you might have a speeding ticket, you might say your office 365 is out of date, and they're just trying to protect the municipality against, um, you know, cyber attacks. So, How are we doing on that? Well, I get a report, and uh, staff members as well as council people show up, and after uh, clicking on more than two, an email is sent from them which has a link for required training. What I identified is that most people weren't clicking on that because that too, I think you weren't sure if that was another phishing or spoof or spam email because it did say EUSA because that's the tech, that's the venue they use for the training. So we're changing that so it will say training at North Canton, Ohio, Kaka. So always hover over an email address to see the full address, but that one you should see as training. If you hover over it, it will be at North Canton, Ohio, Kaka. And if you do get one of those, please click it open. Please click the link and watch the required training, and you'll, you'll come off the report. So if we get one, that means that we've opened the uh, fish you have, yes. expedition. And we just want to provide that training to make you more aware of the exposure that it puts you your training yet now? I've watched all the videos. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. I guess as we get into April, it's orange barrel season, and we got a kind of jump so far on the 2019 paving con contract. The uh, contractors come into town. I think we've got 29 catch basins. So I think uh, catch basin work tomorrow. Uh, another couple of leagues of concrete curb and gutter work kind of following that. And a couple of streets that don't need that type of work. We're actually talking about the asphalt plant opening this week and maybe a million to be paid within this week, next week. So it, it's really moving along. I think by the end of the month, we're going to have a lot of the behind us. So I'm happy about that. And actually, I always worry about temperature. I didn't think I'd have to worry about temperature in the spring, but it's cold, it's cold. But we'll think it'll be okay. 
Uh, also, uh, um, a contractor on the street paving was also our Elmwood waterline contractor. That's kind of a late project from last year. <coughs> and when he finishes those catch basins tomorrow, he's going to jump over and start on Elmwood. In fact, they got a lot of materials delivered, water lines there today. I know the neighbors have been asking, and that's about ready to start. Uh, also, another leftover one from last year is our East Bay water line and, and roadway uh, reconstruction project. Uh, the mainline water line is all in, and we have half of the 59 uh, customers tied into the new line now from the old line. That's kind of a slow process, but that, that's moving on. It's been the odd outage out there, but uh, it's to be expected with the water line project. But uh, yeah, all in all, moving on, ready to get you know, the legislation tonight. Thank you. We're looking forward to wave two. So, got a lot of comments. And just ask that the Residents have some patience with me. I mean, it's going to be an inconvenience. It really is. But we'll get through it. We always do. And, and uh, see what else I have for you. One of the things we looked at in the last couple of months is the timing of our traffic signal with the North Main and Apple Grove intersection, especially in that PMP. We noticed the traffic was really backing up for that eastbound traffic, especially if they wanted to make a left turn to go north. So we studied that, actually got a firm, checked the timing, and, and, and kind of see how we were optimizing our time. Like, really, we weren't. I mean, there's still, no matter what you do, there's 60 seconds in a minute. But the key is, is to, our, our traffic controllers allow for time of day. Uh, if it's on the PM peak, we can put in a different timing than the AM peak when the traffic's going opposite directions. So we've done that, modeled that, and just last week went out and, and put that in the field. And we feel that it's really working when, when we take a look at it. it was before, people were reporting maybe two or even three cycles in the evening, heading eastbound to turn left to go north. Now that's clear now in one cycle. I've seen it myself. Our traffic engineers looked at it, and, and our traffic technician looked at it from the city standpoint. So early on, knock on wood, we think that's really helpful. And any observations you have or your constituents have, please let me know. We can always tweak that a little bit. So I think that's going to be a big improvement. Because once we can't really get traffic through that intersection efficiently, then we have to look at capacity, which is lanes, and that would be really expensive. So we uh, optimize the signal first. Rob, just a question on the Everhart project, and I know we're just responsible for mm -hmm. the water lines. Mm -hmm. So over the weekend, it was just really backed up again because we've gone down to one lane. I understand we don't control those flights, but are those things that obviously those are all our kid people typically coming from that direction? Sure. Um, are those things that we can call you about and say, hey, can they check the lights? Could they be more efficient during the weekends? Or again, then you can call someone or. Yeah, any complaints that we have. So, you know, we have bi weekly progress meetings. In fact, I have one tomorrow morning. Okay. It's on the, the construction team on that. Okay. And um, better than that, I'm not to wait two weeks. I mean, if we have a question, I call it the county or construction management. And, and if they have a detour or something set up, like they do now, because uh, they're building that north side of the east leg of Everhart, yeah. like in front of Fazoli's and stuff. So yes. they're down in one lane, and of course that backs up over the railroad tracks yes. and up the hill. That's what she's talking about. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. Yeah. It was back to Alberta on yes. Saturday. It was like the lights, well, there's nowhere to go. But. Yeah. And then my other question was, so in that property, I mean, it's packed in there all the time. So was there never, and maybe it's just we don't have the width in the road, but was there never thought to put a, a little turn lane in there? I mean, you know, you get stuck at that light all the time, and you just are kind of surprised with that much traffic, how there's not a turn lane going yeah. into that. Which light? Like, what are you talking about? Right past the, at least if you're coming. Heading west? Uh, so if you're coming into North Canton on Everhart. Southwind? Yeah. No, no, on, on Everhart. And then just if you, if there's no left-hand turn to go into, like, oh. that head, sir. Oh, that no, oh, right there. Right there. Oh, oh, right in. Okay. That may yeah. be taken care of with this project. Let me take a look at the okay. plans and see the lane. Doesn't, yeah, I, I can't tell. It doesn't look yeah. like it, but it just is always, mm -hmm. like, shocking to me that we're doing all this work and right. we did not put a second lane in there. And I know I'm it's pretty not sure us. The, the, the new project will have an uh, eastbound Everhart and the turn left and north um, into the plaza there. Okay. There. But I, I I've had a lot of questions on that shopping thing, and they all think it's us. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Rob. Okay. Yes. Yeah.
Yes, uh, just a few items. We have, um, first off with the road paving, this is the best start to road paving that we've had in 18 years. I mean, all the projects are out. Um, and normally the temperature, we were concerned about the temperature when it was October, you know, just trying to finish and put the projects in. So, I mean, you did a great job. It's a quick start with overhead. Uh, also, we had over the weekend, there was a, um, a truck that was transporting gravel to Little League, and our environmental response was excellent. The truck had broke a hydraulic line and leaked some uh, hydraulic uh, fluid at the parking lot. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a critical area because we have, you know, water wells in that area. And uh, the response by the administration and by our water treatment plant uh, was excellent. We had sun pro out there and they cleaned things up in a timely manner and there was no negative impact uh, to the environment that was captured and contained in the parking lot, which was really good news. But with that, in North Canton, when we run into those things with our hydraulics, Fluid. The good news is that we do not use the normal hydraulic fluid, we use vegetable oil. So that when there is a line break, it's all biodegradable. So if we were to spill 30 gallons of hydraulic fluid uh, on a roadway or a parking lot, the vegetable oil works great. And then lastly, uh, we do have our Sergeant John Ellen in the back of the room there, and he is the epitome of our police officers that stay in shape. He's a part of the wellness program in North Canton, and he goes out to the, uh, the impulse training, and uh, he's, he's an example to all of our young police officers, and to all of our police officers that are staying strong and in shape, and, uh, and ready to respond to the needs of the people in the community. And uh, so we appreciate you doing that. And then you shed a lot of pounds, too, in those workouts, haven't you? Yeah. So, so keep up the good work. Where you been, John? I haven't seen and you. And Dominic goes there, too. I haven't right? seen you, John. <laughs> I'll see you in the morning. Uh, Director DiOrio. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we did receive an emailing from uh, Sheston Wilson from Johnson Controls uh, providing four references that was requested. Two local references have case studies still pending, soon to be published and handouts with two finished case studies were attached. References with case studies still pending was the Stark County Metropolitan Housing Authority. Uh, total project size, eight million, approximately over 20 years, with a guarantee of annual energy savings of $325,000. The Lucas County uh, Metropolitan Housing Authority, 6.7 million projects, guaranteed amount of 15.1 million over 20 years. We have a letter of reference from the Wicking County Board of Commissioners where they did a project and then also specs on the University of Akron. So if you're looking for a place to call, there are a few places. Um, on a note to the uh, Park and Rec uh, Chairman and the Ward Council Representative in Ward 3, Got pictures of your new playground. It's going to be going into Eastwood Parks. Uh, myself, Kathy Farina, uh, Brian Hill worked on this a lot. We, we reached out to different vendors, and I want to say that you know, part of that came from a result of, of travel that uh, the deputy director and I did to the Ohio Municipal League for a conference and uh, opportunity to interact with vendors from around Ohio and it enabled, enabled us to broaden our network of who's out there in this space and what they do. And we were able to reach out to them. A uh, vendor up in Cuyahoga County area came down, showed us some stuff that we've never really seen around here. And uh, I'll just pass that down to so those two people look at that while I ramble on on something else. Uh, just as a FYI informational thing that is available. Uh, Stark County Land Bank has a land utilization program called the Side Lot Disposition Program. This can come from uh, homes that, that may have been abandoned, foreclosed upon, torn down. There's a vacant lot. Nobody 
wants to build uh, on an R50 lot, so what do you do with the lot? Uh, this is a mechanism where perhaps the side owners, the other sides of these properties, can enter into a program that would enable them to help uh, maybe split that lot or acquire the lot full so that it can be maintained, but it's just too small to build upon. So we'll probably have an application come forward that the administration will have to review as part of this program. I just want to make sure that you are aware of it because it's not something that's talked about very often. Time for some quarterly kind of numbers on solar speed science. Mm -hmm. So just to give you my big overall of it, it's available. If you want me to email it to you, I will. But just as an example, then say on Apple Grove, we look at the percentage of violators going more than five miles an hour over the limit. Uh, westbound on Apple Road, 1.2%. Eastbound, 2.7%. Those are very low numbers, by the way. Uh, on uh, East Maple, westbound, 4.2%. Uh, the other direction, 2.2%. And that's, that's going down. Yeah, the, the, these numbers are really, really encouraging. Um, uh, on uh, Markport, uh, traveling northbound, 9.7%. Uh, A little higher. Higher. And we're still, uh, as you know, we had a discussion the last time we talked about this with the placement of the southbound sign for Markport and how it uh, might be picking up people who are traveling into the city from Plain Township. And so I spent some time out there looking at that and kind of watching the sign, when does it light up, where the vehicles are located. And uh, that is probably one that we'll probably want to relocate uh, this spring to get a little bit better of a reading on that. Because it's still reading pretty high because they're catching people while they're in plane and the speed limit in plane is higher. So. <coughs> Um, well, that's a shout out to some residents that brought that to our attention. Okay, so Charlotte heading west, 7.6%. Uh, Portage uh, coming east, 23.6%. So we know, we know where we have to be. Imagine if they weren't there. I mean, I mean they're going to slow them down at least to get the road. And finally on Main Street, uh, southbound on Main, it's one and a half percent. Northbound on Main, it's six tenths of a percent. Okay, I'm Glenn Wood. I know that sign was out for a while. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Pat. Uh, Pat, Glenn Wood, the sign was out for a couple weeks. I noticed it's on today, going down the hill towards uh, west on Glenn Wood. Do you have any statements <coughs> on the sign the south? Uh, I didn't, we didn't pull that one. Uh, we, some of the uh, signs were still tweaking. Some of them have been affected by uh, extraordinary cloud cover. The yeah. batteries haven't had a chance to recharge, so okay. we're, we're working on that. It requires us to go out and reset them, <coughs> which, we, which we've had to do. Um, can I also add that? Is that also the crossing signs, pedestrian crossing light signs? So if you're getting calls from constituents ever that they aren't working, it has to do with that. With the lack of sun and solar after so many cloudy days, it will cause those to not work. So if they press the button and it doesn't light up, we just have to send out our office and Jason and they are set Imagine that. Yeah, northeast from Ohio and solar signs. Residents will be receiving in the next couple weeks uh, the notice from the electric aggregation program as to what the new rate will be that the city uh, received through the process of securing a number of quotes for uh, electric uh, utility rates. So if those individuals are already enrolled, they will remain enrolled. If they wish to opt out, they'll have a letter and a form that comes with this. That they can do that. Uh, so just want to let council know that that's happening. <clears throat> council will also be receiving a uh, uh, referral from the Planning Commission on the North Kansas City Schools uh, for condition.
additional use uh, situation with their build out. And I want to bring this up now because I know after these reports are done, you're going to get into the setting of the council agenda for the next few weeks. If that's correct, Mr. President? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so, um, you know, they, would, they wish to commence with the, their construction when school lets out. And so we need to have everything done in this building that can put them in the position that they can begin that. And in order to do that, um, I am suggesting that we schedule a special meeting on April 29th when you have a committee of the whole meeting, right? So that you could give uh, another reading to this, uh, you'll, unless you pass it on an emergency. But you'll do your first reading on February, I'm sorry, on April 22nd. This will be on the committee next week. Uh, but you do your first reading April 22nd. If you want to do it on emergency, that's fine. If not, then we would need to schedule April 29th as a second. May 6th, we're planning no meeting. And then on May 13th, you could give it its third and final reading. And I believe that would be acceptable uh, to the school. So I want to put that out there. And then likewise, if you are going to schedule a meeting for April the 29th, uh, I would like to also add ordinance number 2819 and 2919 to that. That would be for the Johnson controls, and hopefully council will have an opportunity to, to vet out what they want by that time, and we can give that uh, process moving along. That concludes my report, which is one in some direction on this so that we can get these other items going. You're requesting three readings for that bat? Is that what, did I hear you correctly? I'm not, I'm, I'm giving, I'm trying to get what council wants to do. If you want to do a, a one in an emergency for the school so that they can get moving and have that knocked out of the way, that's fine. If you need to do this three readings, I, I think we need to have the third and final reading on May 13th because we're getting too close to that June construction and too close to school being out. Can we, do, can we do an emergency on the additional use? I don't know. I'm not sure we can. Yeah, can we do that on the additional I use? I don't believe we can. That's outside of my okay. purview. Okay. But why don't we look into that and figure it out? We were talking about meeting for a public meeting as well up here. Yeah. Yeah. We were tending on discussing the need for a public hearing on it as well. Get this on, yes, on this is the conditional use. Permit for the playhouse. May 13th, we have the, the Howard Whitworth zoning as well as the one for supervisor for director of permits. We could <coughs> perhaps schedule for the 20th just before the committee of the whole. You don't think we can put three on the 13th? Well, um, scheduling this one is going to uh, run. We have 30 days. Within, well, it's, we've already gotten it with the uh, schedule that was in the repository. And I think it's, I don't recall the date, but it's really so. I think the exact date is either. We just had it first come with the day or two.
Well, let's just do what we have to do, put it on the schedule, whatever. And this is for the theater? Yeah, this is, yes, sir, for the Playhouse Theater. This is the first opportunity we had to be following for the conditional use. So you would have first reading on the 22nd, second on the 29th if you do a special, and third reading on the 13th, and then the hearing on the 20th. But that puts the hearing after the, the third reading. So you can't do that. It has to be on the same day okay. or before. So you could do a special on the 20th after the hearing to do the third reading rather than on the tw April 29th. Yeah, I believe we are going to have the 29th, but we are having the 6th. Correct. Correct. That's correct. That's correct. So we'd have the first reading, 22nd, second reading on the 29th. And you're saying we can't do the public hearing on the 13th and have the third reading then? We don't believe there's time to get it published in oh. 30 days. So the public How long does it take to get it published? I mean, that's the 13th. What's two weeks? Well, we need to do 30 days and a few days. This one that's already scheduled for 6.30, perhaps we could get it on for the 13th and 6.15. So we have oh, uh, yeah, I thought three it. items. Yeah. Give each one 15 minutes. That's why I'd ask you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So when I look I'll, at I'll do my very best. At 6.15. Let us know. And if that's the case, the third reading would be the 13th. Correct. Okay. Do you need to vote for the Yeah, so while we're there, let's, let's go ahead while it's still fresh. Definitely want to add special council meeting April 29th following the committee of the whole. Yes. Ordinance 28 and 2919 and this conditional use. First reading. Second reading. Second reading. Second reading. Second reading. Yes, sir. Okay. Is there a motion to second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we'll have that special council meeting at the 29th, Laura. And that's really all we have to do right now until. Do they need to vote to do a public hearing? Yes. Oh, sure. Okay. 615 on uh, May 13th. Unless this is for conditional use for the uh, North Camp Playhouse. Yep. Conditional use North Camp Playhouse public hearing May 13th. 615. <coughs> I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Just to set the stage for that, we did have that uh, meeting last week. It was in addition to approving the preliminary and the final plans. And it simply was the school. There was one resident that asked a couple questions for the developer. There was no one speaking in opposition to the conditional. Essentially, it's um, revamping it, but not increasing its footprint, so it should not impact the residents around it. We did have a discussion with them that, uh, curiously, the North Canton Hoover High School, the large flat guess how it's zoned, it is R70. And so the suggestion was because there's actually at least three flats that make up that area, the very front of it, where the, um, they have a practice field. That's Parson Institution. There's just a little <coughs> sliver of a, of a parcel there, and then the large parcel. And so uh, Mr. Van Gunny and I, Looked that over, and we made a suggestion to the school that uh, it's not going to help right now, but for future zoning issues, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and replat those, put all the plats into one, and then rezone it as it should be in parks and institutions, and that should solve any future uses uh, that may be conditional. Done, sir. All right. Uh, next up, director of finance. 
floor. Thank you. Just a couple updates for you. Um, a couple weeks ago, we had Rita Tax Day here at City Hall. We helped about 100 residents get their city income taxes done for free, and two, including two key slings. Two like it. Who came in. Um, so that was very good. Um, we continue to have about a week left in tax season. We have forms out here on the front <coughs> If anybody still needs one, or your easiest option is still to go to RitaOhio.com and file there. Um, we continue to have people come in every day with questions and, and concerns, and we try to go the best we can and, and get them to read it. Um, we've also been working on our automated meter reading project through utility billing and working with the water distribution department with Brian Hill. Um, those tower units have gone up on top of our water towers. Those have been turned on. They're transmitting <coughs> radio signals to, the, they're called smart points, the little boxes that are being put out on the homes. We have about 700 of those out in the field right now, and we have about a 90% success rate on the first try of pulling reads from those. So it's doing very well. And the distribution staff continues to go out every day. Every time they make a service call or you know turn on or off water for any reason, they're putting one of those smart points out. And as Catherine said, we're working on getting our summer staff, so we'll have two people dedicated just to getting those smart points out. Um, and then they bring the the information back here to the billing staff and they get that put in the computer so that all of the accounts are reading as they should. So that, that'll be a big help to um, the distribution staff in the long run. Those folks will be able to transition over to other roles because they won't need to be reading meters 15 days a month and walking the entire city. So that's exciting to them. And then finally, a little bit of bad news um, on the technology front, and I know everybody's going to think this is because we talked about Lots of money for moving and technology, but I can assure you that when the person came in to help me with this system last week, we tested it two times. It worked perfectly both times after we changed the setting. Tonight it did not work. Catherine did not get the um, extraordinary subscription on the phone. I asked her, we were messaging, I said, can you pop down there and try it again, start it, stop it? Did not work. So once again, we did not live stream on YouTube this evening. We have the audio recording and obviously the court recorder, but we did not stream successfully. Got so Chuck here. And we have Mr. Osborne's tape as well. So we'll continue to work on it. I think we'll have AtNet come in perhaps and, and look at it again and, and see what we can do. But it, it is a mystery to me. It, it worked sort of for Planning Commission last week, um, but Chris, that clerks those meetings, didn't think it was working until she got a message from her husband that said, hey, this is on, so it is just very touchy, okay. and I'm not sure why. Well, we're still very forward-thinking. In the meeting last week, people were saying that no can was ahead of the times for streaming because so many other entities do not. Wow. So the fact that we still have all these other backups is a good thing, and it's, it's, a, it's a testament to us that we stream. So first thing, we'll get it right. We'll keep trying. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Director Wall. Yes, sir. Having had a first-hand account of serving with the two prior council clerks and in their absence when each of uh, them had retired so I, I have some first-hand account experience of what's necessary and required of a clerk of council. One of those is the, the continuing frustration with some of the technology, I can assure you that some of it is that wire bundle that we have here. Uh, the finance director and, and I have uh, each, each confirmed that uh, there's an issue there. Perhaps it's not what's making this problem because some of the software uh, protocol has changed between YouTube and the third party software we have for streaming and unfortunately we don't receive the notifications that this protocol has changed. We find out afterwards. So I can say with uh, that uh, background and experience of what goes into preparing the agenda to publish legislation, to track agenda through first, second, third readings, to schedule meetings, all of those things that where we are right now with the finance director and, and her staff uh, taking over the lion's share for sure, for certain, uh, those duties that um, it's 
in my opinion, that it's working very, very well. Uh, Director Brown is a, a bit of what you call a, a techie, and so she utilizes technology for increased efficiency and accuracy. And so I, I wanted to give her the uh, kudos that she and her staff deserve in putting all this together for us. There's so much that happens behind the scenes and immediately afterwards and ready for the next one. So I think uh, in a very brief amount of time that uh, she's um, herself and brought them up to what's necessary and as well as making their improvements in utilizing technology for this purpose. Thank you. Thank you, Tim Marcus. Member Foles. No report. Mr. Anna. No report. Member Revolt. I have a report. All right. Let's no hear it. Roll. Let's hear it. First of all, I'd like to ask the repository to sign to North Canton the headline writer for the Hall of Fame. I read with uh, some dismay uh, Mr. Tripp's recent letter to the editor. Uh, I think part of the frustration of citizens is that they don't get a response. Well, tonight, Mr. Tripp, you're going to get one. Uh, first of all, the clerk's position was widely advertised in multiple venues. The fact of the matter is the applications were viewed separately, not by one but by at least two of our professional staff. One was the director of finance and the other was the assistant director of administration, an individual who has significant HR background. <clears throat> if each of those individuals individually and separately selected a candidate, that candidate received an interview by the professional staff, and then having successfully completed those interviews, moved to an interview with members of council, Stephanie, Mark, and myself. Uh, we had two candidates. Now remember, we were looking for a professional clerk, and there are very specific standards associated with that position. We had two candidates, one who was a clerk, a second who had some administrative experience. The fact of the matter is that after the interviews, the three of us could not come to a consensus. And we believe, I think, I don't speak necessarily for Mark or Stephanie, but my, my sense was that if we were not agreed, then we should not proceed. The fact of the matter is, Larry, uh, I think we all embrace a certain lesson learned from our previous experience. What were they? Be familiar with the hire. Really understand who we were hiring. Number two was take care with the onboarding. We had a position that essentially reports to council, and the council's not here. So we have a management issue. How do we bring a new employee on when we're not here? So the question was, and this is the critical one, how do we manage a clerk on a day-to-day -day basis, in and out, in absentia? If you look at the Ohio Revised Code, Section 507, you'll see that in townships, clerks are also the fiscal officers. Clerk treasurer, now fiscal officer. But for years and years and years, certainly as long as I've been involved, it was clerk treasurer. And I suspect that when Barbara Rodemeyer wrote our charter in the 60s, she gave that authority to our finance director to serve as clerk. Why? Because it had already existed embodied in the code. In fact, today, if you look at our population, roughly 17,000, we're about a third the size of Plain and Jackson. <coughs> Why didn't we have a better pool? I'm going 
going to suggest the answers lie right in this room. We heard from one that she watched the meeting videos and was horrified by the disrespect that was shown to the elected officials. Her words, not mine. Hostile work environment. We also know that there were clerks who were actively discouraged from applying. Okay. So you have to ask yourself, what clerk in her right mind would want to come in and risk her career here? Marketplace of work. So under the circumstances, as we sat here and Laura said, maybe there's a third way or you're willing to try it, the answer was, yeah, I think we need to look at that. I think Doug and I said we would have preferred a full-time professional clerk. No bones about it. But frankly, and I can speak for no one else, I wasn't prepared to hire someone I wasn't absolutely comfortable bringing on board. I think we all know there were problems and issues in that office that are yet to be resolved. We hope to get to them. But the fact of the matter is, we needed someone who could hit the ground running, get us organized, and make it work over the short term. I think this was a pragmatic decision. Certainly, that's the way I look at it. And again, I don't speak for the other six, Barry. But I can tell you this. It sure as hell wasn't unethical. And it wasn't manipulative. Your words, not mine. And I might say, unfortunately, were positives. I'm glad we had this clerk. She's good. And I appreciate the fact that she was willing to think out of the box, step up, and give us a solution, certainly over the short term, that would fill this void. Ideal? We'll find out. But the fact of the matter is, what we have is not altogether different than what exists right now in Plain and Jackson Township. Exactly. It's exactly what they have. And so to purport that somehow this was conjured up, manipulative, unethical, I think is simply false. It doesn't comport with the facts. Again, if we're going to be honest, we all understand we had an issue, it got taken care of. I frankly told people it wasn't going to be neat or pretty for a period of time. Is it ideal? Maybe, maybe not. But the fact of the matter, again, I come back to this, is I'm going to defend this clerk over here. She didn't manipulate anything. I give her credit. This is exactly what we want. We want people who can think out of the box, be creative, keep the, keep the operation running. That, Mr. Peters, is my report. That was a very good one. Thank you. That was going to be hard to follow. Yeah. I, I'm just going to say ditto. <laughs> <laughs> no report. <laughs> um, yes, I would agree 100% when I read that uh, regarding someone who we asked to think differently and above and beyond, it goes above and beyond, and to have that reported was, again, false. Um, and there were other issues that happened when we were looking. It's not normal to have verbatim minutes. We have researched this. You can't find people that can do verbatim minutes. So there were many issues when we were looking at it. And that was one of the things when we said, well, what do we want in the court? Does it have to be what it's been for 50 years? No. The times have changed, and it's time that we look at things differently. And we wanted a clerk that possibly could think outside the box as well. And not just spend approximately three days doing verbatim minutes when we still have sound and tight, and we typically have either Chuck's or ours video. So we did think about that, and we all talked about that a lot. So, um, and we're going to continue to look at it, and we gave ourselves a time period to look at this and, and to think differently. And I wouldn't be surprised if other entities are looking at us going, good job, way to use your resources, way to think of someone that's in-house 
who wanted more responsibility, who wanted maybe a change, and said, hey, can I take a look at this? And Laura, bravo to you for letting someone in your department look at a, a, a different way to maybe move in a different direction. So thank you for all you've done, and hopefully we'll continue to think out of the box and move this community forward. Wow. Wow. You guys are killing me here. OK, so let's make it more interesting. So they just had a gas tax, and which will generate $300,000 a year for North Canton. So I propose on the record that that 300,000 goes towards streets, alleys, and sidewalks for next year. So I just need you to be thinking about that now. So go, I'm pound it. If you think about it, we had the Arctic Blast, so work to it. All boards, the whole, I want streets and alleys affect the whole city, all the people coming and going. So it's a benefit for all. And then when you think about the busy roads, we want to focus on the polymer, the little bit more expense for the long term. Paul, so for example, the Arctic blast destroyed the roads that are just regular blacktop. Because when you do a band-aid approach, when they mill an inch and a half off and lay a nice fresh coat, a lot of people don't realize that's just band-aid. So as soon as it gets to zero, it blows apart, you know? So I'm suggesting, let's get the infrastructure in place here. Because I mean, really, I mean, 580K, I mean, that doesn't even redo a whole one road. Look how much it's going to cost to do uh, Weber, a million bucks. To, to take it all the way down. That's one road to do it all the way down. So I'd like to see a million dollars given next year for my budget, and I'd like to see some sidewalks done, and then let's work on a sidewalk plan and mix in with that. Right? We can call it streets, alleys, and sidewalks. What do you say? <laughs> all right, so, so the gas tax, we won't feel the impact from our pocket, we will feel the impact on Give our car maintenance. Okay, so the report's over? The report's over. Chris, said, right. Chris said no more. <laughs> Okay, so it affects all words in the city. Got it. Are we in? Go. Got it. All right. 100%. That's all I have for you. Nice job, Alan. Thank you. You can quite rise to member of Volts. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I can't keep up with that. That was powerful. Yeah, that was a speech. What's that? What's that? Um, you got to keep that for the minutes. Do we? Yeah. What do we have?